Well, you're... actually, I can't achieve orgasm without <laughs> diarrhea. So that's that's a very specific kink, I think. <laughs> Do you ever think that, that also all the dogs that were alive when you were a kid are all dead? Literally all of them. <laughs> oh my god. god. Every no, single one of them you guys. I've never thought about it's, that. It's seriously fucked up. That, that has messed with me. <laughs> and now I'm thinking about my first grade teacher. And if my first grade teacher had a dog. <laughs> what's, what's the proper way to memorialize a dog? Um, like, like do, you, do you just like keep the collar i know some people my my first set of dogs that i had when i was children um my sister really wanted to cremate them for she, she thought it would be nice to have the ashes like you normally do with people and uh my dad was like that's dumb um we ended up doing it anyways because that, that's what my sister and my, my mom wanted um and then for for the last 11 years there's just been two dead dog ashes and like pie tins that just sit in in velvet bags on on my fireplace not even like in nice urns not by pictures there's no like memorials or anything they're, they're just like sitting there in what looks like a pie tin and some kind of a va- bag that you'd put a crown royal in and that's it yeah um not so, to be too insensitive but how long have they how long uh, has it been since it, they died? It, it's probably been about 10 or 11 years Okay. Good amount of time. Yeah, it's a good amount of time. How, how, <laughs> how much longer are you planning to keep those bags of ashes? I, I do. I, that's not my call. That's not my call at all. That's that's okay. my parents. My parents' house. They paid for the dogs. They're 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 sitting there still. And sometimes, like when I go over, I just look and I'm like, man, that's so weird. I don't know. I don't know the right thing to do. Like I I have in some box that that original dog's collar. I saved the collar, mm. and I feel like that's some kind of like maybe that's not even necessary. Um, I, I I don't know what, what what do you do what do you do with dead animals? Is it just like a bury in the backyard thing? Do you do they go away forever? Like what's the? I feel like the same question you could ask the same question for people, right? Like what when I was literally going to transition. <laughs> when at some point. do you when do you throw away ashes of people? This is. <laughs> Are you recording? Is this going to be <laughs> Absolutely. I want so I, I want you to know that this it's is going to be on the show. So just Okay. Because <laughs> this is like a trap that we set for our guests. Because like let's say let's say I get my grandpa or something, right? It's like oh he's pretty cool. What if I give my kids my grandpa and they're like, "Well, you know, my dad was not an asshole, so his grandpa's probably pretty cool, but like it's ashes." And all of a sudden I'm passing down like my kids 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 are passing down like 12 tins of of grandparents. <laughs> Like, what's the point? Uh, Maybe. I'm pretty sure at some point, t- whenever you have any sort of connection, if you no longer have that connection with that person, it goes out. Just right in the right in the garbage. It's, How do you throw them out? Do you do you like no, go you don't pour throw them, them out in the garbage? Jesus, no. You so throw you it pour- out, you know, like plant it in a nice, you know, field or something. You know? Oh, that's fair. That's fair, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what you do with the ashes. I, uh, I've never thrown out ashes before. The yeah. there are, neither have I, but I still know what to do with them. That's, that's pretty reasonable. That's pretty reasonable. I, I like that. I like that. You know, throw it so, over some, uh, some cliffs somewhere in the water or whatever. I was going to say, I, I've never had a dog. Uh, I've only had cats, and I've never kept anything. But I did keep uh, a couple things of my grandfather's. Um, I kept his dog tags because um, he was the only person in – anybody in my family that was also in the military um and then i kept like his whole his old work jacket i still have that in my closet what would what would you guys want people to keep if if you had a choice do you care I don't think I have, like, I feel like old people have cool things, right? Like, when you go look through a Goodwill, you're like, wow, that jacket, that, that denim jacket, fucking rad. But, like, I don't think I can identify anything that, that I own that I'd be like, this is worth keeping for any I, sentimental reason. I just bought a new computer, so I would want Ellie to keep that brand new computer we just built. Is your, is your girlfriend named Ellie? Yeah. That's my girlfriend's name too. <laughs> oh shit! This is wild. Dude. My girlfriend, her name. <laughs> oh, holy shit! <laughs> Joey, what's the name of your right hand? Can you call it Ellie? It's incredibly Wait, what rude. Right hand? Hey, what the? Incredibly rude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yes, I do I call know. her Ellie. It's actually kind of fucked up now in this sense, but like that's a whole different weird thing, man. I um, yeah, I mean, especially because like she said, she stopped sending photos to you. Like she really promised me, so <laughs> I, I do really don't appreciate that, dude. Come on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> gotta start putting yeah. nail polish on that right hand. Yeah. I've. Uh, uh. I, I, I've been looking at uh, dating apps more now that we decided this is a society to kind of care less about quarantine and maybe like try and get back to some semblance of normal, which I think is the wrong decision and science and time will tell us. Um, but w- uh, it looks like most dating apps now, um, which are things you have to experience that you both have in Ellie, I guess, um, are, are promoting like digital dates where they like schedule a time for you to video conference in app and it feels like hmm. uh the least that like the last thing i ever want to do like I, I couldn't imagine being like hey uh you had a funny picture on your profile do you want to go on a uh on a, on a hinge e-date we can we can remote connect um it, it, it seems horrible. I, I don't know who's doing it or what the market is but maybe i'm out of touch and this is fine it sounds terrible to me at first but the more I think about it, the more appealing it sounds to me because it, it's like a, a version of speed dating, right? You know, where people go to those like that that's was a true thing, right? Where they go and they just like sit at a table and then move next, next, next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've talked to this person on text, but you don't like there's a certain feel about talking to people. Like when they're not, you know, trying to figure out exactly what the perfect sentence is before they hit the enter button, you know. So this is a good way just to like, hey, let's take a half an hour to actually talk to each other before you meet in person. And uh, maybe you don't you, maybe you're able to, you know, get some vibes from having a conversation That's- in person. You know, I'm you're like, you, ah, she could be a serial killer. I'm getting those vibes. We're not having a real life meeting. All right. Just what I was looking for. <laughs> Great. I can I finally talk about the skeletons under my, under my stairs. <laughs> what do you guys think about this idea? Tell me if I'm crazy or not. Okay. So I was thinking, and this is actually Dota related, a genderless dating service. Okay. Tinder, something like Tinder, where uh, you can delete this from the, the VOD, by the way, because I don't want anybody stealing this idea. Uh, you know, <laughs> Tinder, where all Nobody. pronouns are, <laughs> hey, man, you haven't heard it yet. All pronouns are banned. You get instantly banned from the service if you use any gender pronouns, okay? You could maybe even throw age in there, other, other than when you're getting to, like, the laws. Obviously, you know, that's questionable. I'm not trying to go there. But <laughs> hear me out on this. So when I first met, when I first met my girlfriend, it was on it was on Dota, and she was a techie spammer. And she wouldn't fucking leave my lane. She just wouldn't leave. And, and it was, it, well, I thought it was going to be awful, but I was Earthshaker. And I just kept setting up these like six suicides, mostly my play, because obviously I played really good. And, you know, Techie's a pretty fucking easy hero. But, you know, it was good synergy. So, I, and, and then I was also like, uh, I was doing some things on voice chat, you know, trying to be funny. And uh, this dude thought I was really funny. I was like, man. This guy's like, this guy's gonna be like good friends with me. He thinks my jokes are funny. We've got good synergy. I want to fucking add this guy. And then I added him, and lo and behold, two weeks later, it's it's a girl. I was so <laughs> stoked. It was fucking awesome. And I feel like the reason that it's worked out. I've been with her for like six years, and I feel like the reason that it was that it, it worked out was because I had no stake in the game at the start. You know, I had absolutely because you know your brain, like you you view. Oh God, how do I say this without sounding? <laughs> okay like Go basically on. oh jesus christ i'm gonna give you all the rope possible to hang yourself with so like just have have all of it <laughs> i realize where i'm going with this and it sounds really bad okay you can't separate gender from somebody's person you know persona that's that's part of who they are every little piece of somebody is part of who they are and for an awkward nerdy dude it, it's kind of like if somebody's a girl so you get nervous you get clammy you know i'm not i'm not uh, acting differently other than that but mm-hmm. that wasn't there that was gone i just uh, you know i was basically it was neutral and i feel like that could work in app form and i could sell it and make a lot of money so let's workshop uh-huh. this a little bit. So, like, how 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 do you completely hide gender? Would you also need to be hiding pictures? <sighs> yes, that, see, that's a problem. That's a problem because how would you select somebody if you if you there were no? Maybe you could do pictures of, you know, if somebody likes hiking, just some nice photos that they've taken on, 
a hike, something like that, right? So only, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so they're yeah, never you're the still subject. getting somebody's kind of personality from that, right? Okay, I, I feel like you guys are workshopping the wrong part. <laughs> Go Why on. am I getting on this app in the first place? For, for okay, for, for, for so, dating purposes. Well, okay. So for, here's the thing: well, is that, I hope if, I, if I invest a certain amount of time talking to this person. And I'm interested in that. I see where you're going. And I would I like to pursue a sexual relationship yes. with this person. I thought and about it this. It turns out we're not compatible one way or another. I thought about this. I thought about this. Okay. So here's the thing. Is this. Time to meet in person. <laughs> this app. This app is not about dating and banging and all that dirty stuff. It's about friendship. Okay. That's a, it's a friendship Tinder that's genderless. Because okay. there's enough bias in this world for all oh, this person's this gender, this person's this. I'm going to believe this about them. This would remove that. That's the idea. Can Hiking I take pictures? No people in it. Maybe dogs, cats. A lot of avocado toast. Um, could I select uh, different, different uh, other fields? Like, could I, ch- like, if I'm not choosing gender, can I still maybe select an age range or like a, like a general interest oh, category God. or like, can you filter for race or like how, 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 how strict can you make this search? Can you do that on Tinder? Can you filter by race? I don't think you can on Tinder. I know you count other dating apps. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent if you get on Tinder, but yeah, it, it is a feature for, for some people, for some apps. I, w- I would say, oh man. See, age is that's that's a weird one because if you're, if, I don't want to hang out with like, any seventy year olds. Like I, I'm, uh, like it needs to be like between between eighteen and like ages. and like dude, you fifty five. Mother... Older Wait, than eighteen. Your, my, my, what, was my, cap, what was your cap? Fifty five. Dude, that's pretty high. <laughs> I know you're just throwing that's, that out there, but I'm just, I'm just gonna say that's pretty. Is that is that like your cap? You, you you don't go over double your age. That's what I think. So I'm, I'm, I'm 27. Like, I, I think as long as I'm not more than doubling my age, fine. And then yeah. 18, I think, is actually... age limit on friendship. This is a friendship app that we're talking about. <laughs> the I, but, like, like, but, like, what if it wants to be... age by beyond... two plus seven don't work here. <laughs> you could be friends with a seven-year-old. What's wrong with you, Joey? <laughs> see, see, what would be cool is if maybe every, like, one or two weeks or whatever... You earned enough, like Tinder points or whatever it is, like gender, <laughs> whatever it is, and you can. Okay, now you can talk with gendered pronouns. Now we can talk about age. <laughs> you know, these things become available to you as the friendship develops. You kind of see mm. where where it's going. It's like, okay, this person's this person's, uh, you know, fifty five. If you're Joey, like that's fine. You know, for me, it's kind of it's kind of fucked up. It's a little too old. But you know, this person's seventy. They 80, probably like, have a four hundred one k. If they're fifty five, they <laughs> probably own property, so it's probably even better. <laughs> that's, honestly, that's true. If you're How are we like going to seventy eighty? Like that's good. Like that's solid. Like he's <laughs> with all the seventy eighty year olds, and they, like it can kind of continue from there naturally. You know, I feel like that's a natural progression. <laughs> I. It's like you want to do ranked roles, but for dating, like you have to earn yes, the exactly. credits. Yes, to... you get it. You guys get it. <laughs> Everybody thinks this idea is dumb, but like you guys clearly get it. I, I, yeah, I'll as soon as Silicon Valley opens back up, I'll make a PowerPoint. You can you can drive out to to San Francisco. I'll meet you there, and then we can start going okay. to pitch to people. It'll be great. Yeah, we we see a name. a much better idea than it sounded initially <laughs> when you said it's like a, it's a dating app, except with the gender removed. You know, there's 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 some nuances to it that need to be worked out, of course. But you know, we live in 2020. Th- there's a race to be as woke as possible, and if you can capitalize on on this and like merge those two markets, I think I think there might be something there for it. Yeah, yeah. There, you know, there could be. You know, I've been I've been memeing about it for years, but the, in these days, you could, you know. Are you guys uh, about uh, current events on on your podcast? Do you do you try to avoid that? I mean. At all? I like we're literally about anything other than Dota. Yeah, that's part of the okay. problem. I don't know why people listen to the show sometimes because they're like, did we want to know about the collector's cash so we can go vote on? There's a really cool Jakiro set. There's also an Enchanter set that looks like it's from a 60s Playboy Playboy magazine. That one's definitely getting in, by the way. But aside from that, like people are like, ah, anything else, I guess. Um, 
Yeah, so, sometimes it, it's political event. We don't generally get too, too in the weeds because I think it makes some people vomit and we have a worldwide audience. Um, I like to tell people to vote. And Cap, oh, that's, and Cap is that's actually, yeah, and Cap's actually QAnon. We don't talk about it too much, but like it's, that's his thing. <laughs> Um, I just, just just like random sentences filled with what you would think would be total garble. But if you decipher through each third letter, then you discover who actually killed JFK. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was his wife, but yeah, I get what you're saying. With that. <laughs> Obviously. So you've I, listened to this podcast before. I see. Absolutely. I swear to God, I listened to Dota content, dude. No, wait, this isn't Dota content. I forgot. Exactly, exactly. That's uh, Other right. podcasts do that. Maybe we should talk about current events more because I see that uh, Suns fan and Cinder got a real big pat on the back for saying, hey, everybody, hey, everybody, hot take, don't be a fucking racist. So maybe if we also say that, people will be like, whoa, they also have good progressive opinions. How bold of them to, 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 to denounce fucking people who are shitty so um may, give yeah, us a run yeah, we're not boomers not give, boomers here <laughs> yes boomers fine on the friendship dating app bad on the people i want to be app um and now make a reddit thread because we agree that to not be racist what's uh what what's your what's your current uh uh, uh political agenda slash slash world events are, are you like going crazy jenkins did you like look at twitter and then want to die on the inside are you like oh uh, yeah i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of in the boat of looking at Twitter is just insanely depressing. So I, I try to, I try to avoid it, but you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I don't know about you guys, but I'm like a super huge fence sitter where I'll kind of, uh, you know, look at the idea. Like I, I'll never make a judgment call of like, Oh, I believe this, or I believe that I'll kind of either, mm -hmm. either way. Um, so when I, I, I've, I read this thing about like, okay, so content creators, like it's your duty when there's like some sort of crazy, you know, revolution happening yeah. or whatever. If, if you agree with something, you need to you need to say something about it, and that's what I mean. Like I'm on, I'm obviously not on the other side politically with what's happening right now. I think most, <laughs> I think most reasonable most reasonable people aren't. Um, yeah. But like when it comes to oh, as a content creator, you should say something. I'm not sure how I feel about that because I feel like as to my job to uh, take people's mind off of that shit. You know what I mean? But also you have the power to talk to a lot of people, so I guess you should use it. I don't know. What, what do you guys think about that? We actually had the same exact conversation with Slacks. Really? Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, and he was very much uh, what what you were talking about, where uh, we had this conversation heading into ESL1 uh, Los Angeles about um, coronavirus and stuff like that and just various stuff. And Slacks was talked a lot about how he felt like it was his job to be able to distract people from all the terrible things in the world. And yeah, yeah, there's some basic things like racism is bad and stuff like that, um, which he did actually tweet about. Uh, he tweeted about Black Lives Matter. And it was it was a very poignant post. He did a really good job with it. Um, but he's like, he very much wants to be able to make people happier and try and keep all that stuff out and be sort of a break from all of that. Yeah, that's I I, to I totally agree with that. I, I feel totally like agree with that. I feel like there's a certain like uh, like level where if something is so hot button, you almost look deaf for ignoring it. Um, so like I think that might be kind of our, our current climate. Like I I imagine based on the conversations that we did have with Slacks before that like it, it wasn't his first intention to be like yeah I want to like promote this or talk about this or or, or do something you know significant. But um, I that's why I was a little bit surprised to see him talk about it. You know. Um, mm -hmm. But but I, I think that we're at a point where it's just so ubiquitous and so almost generational too that to not say anything feels a little bit weird. Uh, I I don't get mad at people who don't say anything. Uh, I I would prefer if they did, but I don't think I'm I'm for holding it against people who don't. Um, yeah, that, that, that's kind of where I fall. I, I definitely you know I'm not tweeting every day about it, but we did a. Uh, we <laughs> on uh, on Reddit for the old style sheet um, because 
uh, right right now on Reddit in general, but also the Dota subreddit. About it's about a fifty fifty split for people who use the new version of Reddit versus the old version of Reddit, um, and it, and it's increasing. So more people are using the new version, but the old version is much more customizable. It's one of the people probably like you know they remember if they've been there for longer than six months. Um, we took all of the uh, the the link titles that are normally blue, and we just turned them to black, and we're like, hey, this is really subtle. Um, you know, we, if some people might talk about it, it might start a conversation and then it would be nice to just, you know, have another outlet for people who want to discuss this to kind of give them an avenue to in the community. In addition to like, you know, the, the, the no tell video or the Suns fan thread or anything like that. And, um, mm. man, it reminded me how much I hate a lot of people who we, uh, <laughs> cohort with. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think I've gotten to the point where I just discount anyone whose first reaction to anything remotely uh, topical or political is uh, virtue signaling. I think I, I think I'm officially triggered by that word. Um, that that everyone who is doing anything to to promote or show some kind of support is just uh, bad. They're all Nike who's on a PR campaign to try and take some advantage of like this situation. <laughs> They're like, we're gonna make money off of this. Like, right? No, right. it's just like a shitty way to like very easily tear someone down or something down for like ah. But are you being genuine or are you in it for the money? So that that's yeah, right. No. <laughs> I'm 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 with you. I've uh I think I think on both sides of the spectrum you you see this too on on Twitter. Like there are people that are really taking advantage of everything that's happening. I mean, there are people that were taking advantage of COVID too. That's just like that's mm-hmm. human nature. But uh you have I I've, I've seen people on Twitter uh you know very viscerally supporting one political movement or another or whatever, you know, Republican or Democrat. I, I know, like, I'm Canadian, so I don't, I know basically jack shit about any of that. But <laughs> I, I don't like the fact, or I don't like the idea of in in times like these pushing anybody away. Like, I, I would really like for everybody to just agree that what's happening is good. Like, it need it needed to happen basically, and that it doesn't matter what your former beliefs are, and it's okay to also have. B- shitty beliefs in the past if you're changing and learning you know like i i, th- I think there's a there's a lot of uh defensiveness and i think that's like the virtue signaling thing it's it's it, it, it stops the conversation completely right you can't have the conversation after that point and mm-hmm. i think i think that's obviously not good I, I think people need to uh change their minds and i also think people need to be open to other people changing their minds and, and, and it's i mean that's the whole point of like a, a revolution right is, is it's like an ideological revolution or whatever but uh, like I said, I'm Canadian, so this shit is it's really we- it's really weird for me to talk about because it like nothing really related to that is is happening here. It's just that American media is it, you know I know more about American politics than I do about Canadian politics. It's just all yeah. over our media here. It's ridiculous. That, that is the the nature of of America is that we just export <laughs> all of our media to everybody. I really yeah. experienced that in Germany. It was uh, incredible how much Germans knew about America. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> we just export all of it nonstop. Uh, I, saw, to the top. I saw that in China, too. I saw mm-hmm. tons of uh, American TV shows and, and uh, you know, some questionable channels with American models. And clearly it's, you know, some uh, pornography being banned over there. And, you know, they're watching these yeah. Shows that aren't very popular in America, but there it's very popular because it's kind of the only thing. Anyway, uh, you were saying? <laughs> oh, well, as far as the topic of content creators and uh, talking about these sort of things, I do think there is some sort of duty um, to to discuss these things or at least to be able to... Um, so I, I had a long conversation with Blitz about this because neither one of us had really said anything uh, about the current movement. And... Neither one of us really tend to. Um, I think both of us tend to try and keep that stuff off of social media as much as possible. And we both talked about like what we thought about what was going on and then what we have done in like our own personal lives. Uh, and we asked ourselves, like, is this enough? Like, are, are we doing enough, basically? And, um, and I think one of the things that was really grounded for me was that I... I think it's totally okay for you to be like hundred percent. I think it's okay for you to be silent about these things because um, 
people are always, they're always there. There are a lot of private battles that go on. Um, social media is not the extent of everybody's lives. You don't get to know everything about what they're doing and you don't know about what kind of battles they're fighting and you don't know what kind of uh, causes they're supporting in their private lives. So there, that is one thing. And then other thing was the fact that um, I think that sometimes it's important to like, if you are silent about these things there, there's some things like just retreating important messages. Um, that's what like I've been doing with my social oh, media. Yeah, I, I, I've been like, doing, I've been doing that. Um, yeah. But like I did write a statement at some point in time and I said to Blitz and I was like, I don't really, I feel kind of weird about this because I'm not sure what my, I'm I like <laughs> I'm a white male in a very privileged position. Like I don't really know how much my perspective really matters. Um, I'm not adding anything to the conversation. And that was the thing that really stuck with me is that uh, sure, I wanted to express certain things, um, but it was just a rehash of things that I had seen that were already said that I did, you know, uh, signal boost. I did retweet and stuff like that. And it felt like to me that um, there was already enough. There was already enough eyes on this and there was already enough like um, takes on these sort of things that I didn't need to be able to step in and say anything. Now, if I had a unique perspective on something or if I noticed something that um, maybe I feel like isn't being talked about, then yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think you do have a little bit of a duty to speak up about it. But most of the time, these things are already covered. Yeah, like I, I saw you retweet the and comment on the Mattis statement, which made sense. Oh to yeah, me, that that one know? I just lost it. You know, I, I was just like Jesus Christ, like you know, because I hadn't really done, I really really said anything. I just mostly been retweeting and stuff. But like uh, Mattis, I, I'm I'm the same. Yeah, I've been just getting mad at stuff and responding. Yeah. I've legitimately, I, I've probably had the least productive week that I've had in. A very, a very, very long time just because of the amount of time that I've either spent like on Reddit or just on social media, just watching local news sometimes, which I never do just to see how they're covering like live protests. Like mm -hmm. I, I spent just a lot of time just not being productive and trying to figure out how like, you know, I could either signal boost or help or show something. I think as long as you show some modicum of something it's helpful uh like e even just something as simple as you know like like retweeting and signal boosting if you don't want to be someone who's like taking a hard stand and like giving your own like here's a here's a uh, apple notepad document that i screenshotted and then shared like i, I think that yeah. you know th th there's different levels and sometimes people want to hold everyone to the highest level where they have to like you know write a statement make a vlog like do something that that's, that's yeah. very big when really like you don't have to go all 10 out of 10 to show support for something like this or any, any topic in, in general, that's kind of similar. So yeah. 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 The, uh, the general, general Mattis thing was, uh, that was the first time I said anything about it. And that was cause, uh, like that, that was the first time that I had something I felt like I had a little bit of a unique take, which was, I think most people may not like know exactly who Mattis is. And I retweeted that and quoted it because like general mattis is like one of my personal heroes was i was when i was in the marine corps what did, what did he say that guy is a badass that guy that guy is the marine of marines in the modern age yeah um, i've never heard of this dude before before now yeah yeah uh he is he's a very very cool person um and i really respect his opinion on things and um i mean he just you know he he condemned uh trump and you know Oh, was, like the, the, he, the he just the talked decisions. about some other stuff. He used to be part of the administration. Yeah, uh, right. He, okay, I see. He was a military administrative person in the Trump admin last year, I think, and then left or resigned, something like that. And then, um, generally, we don't have generals in any level speaking out against the president. So it's pretty like yeah, it's it's pretty one of the wild. biggest things is the, I the did military, hear about that. The biggest thing is like the military is supposed to remain apolitical. That is like very, very key to to the U.S. military is that you want it to remain as apolitical as possible. And General Mattis, from everything that I have read about him um, and everything that I've seen from him, is a is is a mili military man to the T and in all the best qualities of it. And so, um, when when he finally does speak out about something, I think that it carries a lot more weight because he obviously felt like it was very much needed 
for somebody to be able to step in. And it was very much needed for his voice to be added to it um, because I think he did want to, I think he had a lot of restraint because he resigned from the administration and stuff like that. Um, and he did try and keep things as apolitical as possible. And so if he's finally stepping in, then I really wanted to add to that voice because it's somebody I really respected. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, there comes a point where you kind of have to say something. Uh, man, what makes all of this worse is that right before all of these riots started, worse for me in terms of like my perspective on it, uh, right before all of these riots started, my girlfriend and I started watching a show on Netflix called The Innocence Files. And I don't know if you guys have saw, seen it, but... It's a, docu- it. it's, mm-hmm. it's a documentary series, and it basically covers uh, a bunch of convicted felons that were convicted, um, and they're innocent. And, and basically, you know, throughout the 70s, 80s, and 90s, there were some absolutely laughable police practices in, in terms of coercing witnesses because they had too many cases and they wanted to, uh, they wanted to close as many as possible. Uh, they basically saw that somebody was gang affiliated. So therefore, even though this person didn't have anything to do with the crime, they're gang affiliated. It's just another gangster behind bars, even though in the, the 70s, 80s, if you lived in a neighborhood, you'd be gang affiliated by default. So it, it's not your choice. You're in. So, and it's just the most it man, it's it like makes you choke up. It's one of those sorts of uh, sh- sorts of shows like these guys get out and they're just. Around with their feet on the grass. And it's like 20 something, 30 years taken out of people's lives. And they're like nine out of 10 of them are just black dudes. And it is, it is just like racism to the core, to the point where there are legitimate documented police gangs, gangs within the police that are well documented. And yet you have thousands of people in prison that are in prison under the pretense of shit that they did in the eighties and seventies before there wasn't, before there was DNA, when eyewitness testimony was, was something they relied on for fuck's sakes, they were putting teeth marks on people and seeing if the bite marks matched like all this pseudoscience. And, uh, so my feeling is that probably there's a lot in the justice system that just needs to be completely stripped out and, and re and redone and probably police brutality and the training of the police and hiring better police officers, whatever, that's probably less than half of it. You know, you have corrupt judges, you have corrupt, uh, uh, what are they called? Prosecutioners, prosecutors, yeah, like everybody it's, it, there are so many flaws with it and, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't get, it doesn't get talked about until, until now, which is really great that uh it's it's happening but man that'll fuck you up don't watch that if you if you don't want to uh, yeah i heard about it it sounded very depressing <laughs> very depressing. I, I tend to use all of i can all my media that i consume is all uh fictional and all escapism that's Dude. good well then if, if I, you... I do not watch the news the only bit of news i really get is is what i'm on the internet scrolling through reddit or something Dude, like that the last two we watched were the innocence files and then the epstein jo- documentary <laughs> and it's all <laughs> and it's all it's all corruption it's all corrupt politics and police <laughs> taking bribes and faking this and faking that it's unbelievable it's ridiculous like real accounts this isn't even like the conspiracy shit this is the real accounts of what happened it's all well documented so i need to watch some like anime or something next good lord dude you guys have any recommendations (laughs) if you dude um hear me out 13 reasons why i just came back on netflix with oh yeah with, dude that's so depressing with season four and you hear 13 reasons why and you think oh yeah that's the story you know with the girl she killed herself that was like a big thing on netflix a couple years ago because people are like ah they're they're glorifying I'm suicide sorry, that's season four yes I that's where i'm getting that. at there are at heard season four and mind you season one is an arc where spoilers girl does kill herself that's like the whole that's kind of the whole thing right um <laughs> They made three more seasons, and it turned from what was originally, I watched the first season, it turned from a show that was something that was like, you know, a commentary on on, on suicide and, and teenage uh, America, uh, Western world, and now it is the silliest, 
the silliest drama. Like you, you would assume that there's daytime soap operas that are less silly than this show that for some reason they're still putting out. I cannot believe that I went on Netflix and they're like, Hey Joey, do you want to watch the fourth season of 13 reasons why? And the answer is yes, because, Oh boy, (laughs) it's, it's like, the epitome of do you want to just like have half of a joint and then be like we should watch something stupid because that that's what it is it's 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 really bad tv for all the wrong reasons like we've moved past reality shows it's just like it's like the oc or whatever early 2000s mtv drama you want to describe it is god awful that's too bad that's really too bad i heard the first season was really good uh, you know, yeah, the it, first season is not bad. It, it, it's it's like a well-made TV show that has a lot of thirty-year-olds playing high schoolers, which is always weird. But aside from that, it's not it's not bad. That's it's a, always it's a, it's a solid B plus. Maybe maybe it's maybe, really maybe a B. weird. It's really weird how that's always how it is. Do you, uh, we could be high schoolers, guys? We yeah, could. We, we, we could, could be. Matt, do you do you consume a lot of uh, Netflix or TV or, or outside of Dota media? Yeah, yeah. I I basically don't watch any any Dota stuff. Uh, Probably oh, should yeah. more, but uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I watch games. I watch, I watch like pro matches, but I don't, I don't watch Dota content despite creating it. It just feels weird. It just feels weird. I feel like I'm already doing that enough. But uh, I'll, every every day, I'll I'll sit down. And I'll watch like one show with with dinner. So I've been. I just watched uh, Afterlife before I got into the depressing crime ones. I watched After Afterlife with Ricky Gervais. Have you guys seen yeah. that? It's pretty good. Oh yeah. Before I haven't watched that, it, but I'm familiar. Yes. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, season two is kind of just a repeat of the season one, which is unfortunate. And speaking of repeats of season one, fucking Prison Break, man. Have you guys seen Prison Break? <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. Man. No, no. <laughs> like when it was first coming out, I watched it. And okay. then it went on way too long. Exactly the problem. It is so clearly early 2000s when they shot that show. It's like it's like cliffhangers after cliffhangers after cliffhangers where clearly they're so concerned with like, okay, how do we keep people trapped here so they watch through three minutes of commercials? And and, and then in the third season, they're just in prison again and have to break out again. I, I was so done with the show. Like I liked it. And then it's just clearly they were so excited that they were on like the primetime TV that they just wanted to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Dude, prison break season three. Oh shit. Here we go again. <laughs> There's like eight seasons of it. They're just in and out of prisons all the time. What, what I don't get. And maybe this is like, I don't know, dude, I'm a boomer, but I still don't get how people watch TV with commercials. It <laughs> is unbearable. I will go over to my dad's house and you know, we'll be, drinking a beer, eating pizza, whatever. He'll turn on the TV like, oh, let's watch something. The moment the commercials come on, I'm sitting there and I'm occupied for about 10 seconds of like the car wax commercial. And then I'm done. I'm so bored. I don't even give, I don't care about the show that's about to come back on at that point. I've Very lost quickly. I've lost it. In season three of Prison Break, are his tattoos still helping him? Oh my God. Did Hon- Michael honestly, Schofield have some sort of like clairvoyance into the future? That is, I'm not sure. Still helping him. I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay. I watch. I watch like ten minutes into the first episode. It's like, all right, I'm I'm so done with this. <laughs> I have to save I'm my so time. Yeah. I how long has it, I'm trying to think of the last time that I watched television properly with commercials, and I, I mean, we were kind of in in the generation where if you had cable or satellite or something, you probably had some type of DVR-like device or TiVo-like device relatively early, at least like yeah. like early teenage years when you're like making memories, I guess. So it's right. probably like uh, I used to watch I used to watch an episode of of Fairly Odd Parents or SpongeBob every day yeah. when Hell I woke yeah. up when I woke up before school in bed uh from like maybe second to like seventh grade and i think since then so 15 years at least uh i have never watched tv with commercials sans like the super bowl or maybe like a special event like a debate or something like i i can't think of the last time i've watched tv with commercials i don't know how people do it just imagine if you were watching a twitch stream that had as many viewers as some primetime television channel. And remember, these are boomers watching too. So these people, like you said, they have 401ks, re- retirement savings, uh, TFSAs. They've got everything. They've got a lot of money. 
and, and they're watching nine minutes of commercials per 30 minutes. A third of their watch time is commercials. That is unfathomable. Like TV Very is actually a wet dream, a wet dream for advertisers. <laughs> Other than the fact that you can't specifically target people, you can't know what the person's likes and dislikes are. You can kind of assume some things, but not, you can't know like the internet, you know, Google's keeping all this information on you. They're putting up, you know, I don't know, animes and shit for Cap and old ladies for, uh, for Joey and things like that. That's, Maybe that's, I, I, person, I, person. I, it actually, I get a lot of celiac commercials, which is like odd for some reason. It might make sense now, actually, all things considered. What's going to yeah. happen when we're the old people, when we're like not the boomers, but like chilling in our 60s or something? And then, um, uh, like, can, can because, you believe the Generation Z actually watches their content instead of just having it cybernetically downloaded into their, <laughs> their cyber brain? What's wrong with them? Dude, yeah. boomers these days. All right, time for the spiel. If you're listening to this in podcast form, you can watch this on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can also find this as a podcast anywhere you find podcasts. Also, it really helps if you would rate the podcast on Apple. Five-star reviews would be super helpful in that regard. And if we pick your review and read it on the podcast, Joey will send you something special. And for this week, we've got a review from Natural Causes with a Z, who says, vomit, laughter, and thoughts. Are you looking for a podcast that make you throw up your cooked dinner, drop your plate from laughing so much, and proceed to contemplate life for a while afterwards? Then this is the podcast for you. Cap and Leaf Eater do so well at putting you off your food while enjoying the experience at the same time. All conversations from the crunching of eyeballs, clothes being stolen by a hotel, and nails going through hands. Yeah, that does sound pretty bad. Uh, 10 out of 10 will recommend to my best friend for the laughter and worse enemies to make them lose their dinner. Thank you so much for the wonderful review. Also, uh, we did not do a voicemail this week, but I promise you, uh, you guys have been leaving voicemails and I have heard some of them and they're goddamn excellent. So thank you so much for leaving the voicemails. We will have more of those in the podcast in the future, but we weren't able to fit it in for this week. But if you would like to leave more voicemails, we definitely appreciate it. Uh, the number is 805-328-4020. Again, that is 805-328-4020. Thank you so much. All right, back to the show. Do you guys ever think about like the the retirement homes and you know just a retirement home filled with like gamers and you're just doing like land parties? I, you know, <laughs> I often five or ten v ten. I oftentimes think about like that I'm probably going to be dying in a hospital bed at some age. Some and I'll like have whatever the modern Nintendo Switch equivalent is and just like be playing Dark Souls or something. And I'm probably going to like die playing Dark Souls or something because that's just what's going to happen. Give you a heart attack or something. Some like boss spawns that you didn't think was there. You get a heart attack. <laughs> Real like, life death match in Blood Gulch. It's like meet me at the rocket launcher spawn. <laughs> he was he was in here for a toothache. What the hell? <laughs> he <was fine. laughs> He's only forty. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be in hospital vets with, with like VR headsets probably, and then just be like comatose bodies, but having really fun playing Half Life Alex again. Being like, yeah. I remember when this was great in the in the twenty twenties. Dude, I always hear you always hear old people complaining. Oh, I don't want to go to a retirement home. Uh, it, what bullshit? Okay, they make your food, they make your bed. It's basically a hotel. Have you been in one of those places? It's beautiful, and sure, you know it might kind of smell. It has like a particular smell to it. Um, air freshener, like whatever the the air freshener, whatever's on sale. But <laughs> everything is done for you. You could just sit on your computer and play games. You could shit your pants. You don't even have to go to the bathroom. Like, that sounds awesome. That's basically what I wish I could do right now. That's why I lived with my parents for like 30 years. They do everything for me. This is why Jenkins quit Dota Alchemy. Yes. He set out to make his own YouTube channel so he could make the money so he can pay <laughs> for his retirement it's home. It's expensive. It's expensive. It's not like rent, okay? <laughs> I think now's a bad time to be in a retirement home because we're all getting sick and dying of COVID. But so maybe some slots will open up. Maybe you can go there early. Other because... than that, yeah. Other than that, it's <laughs> it's like prime time. 
I mean, honestly, they also fuck a year, lot. Jink, it's maybe the prices will go down enough. Uh, yeah, that, I was going to say, I can I can really play the market right now. This is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> this, is <laughs> really fucked up. <laughs> this is really fucked up. I told uh, you, so, Joey, Jenkins was going to be a good guest. This is yeah, not... so thanks for coming out. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry about the Reddit thread that's going to happen. Uh, no, Never right. come on our show <laughs> again. It's all right. I have no career anyway. I mean, I want to live in a retirement home for fuck's sakes. Just put me there already. How much, uh, how, how much Dota YouTube stuff are you, are you doing right now? Is it like a, like a daily thing, a weekly thing? Like a... uh, that's surprisingly the first time anybody's ever asked me how much time I put into it. It's uh, it's not. I used to take a lot more time when I was kind of shittier at it, but I've gotten pretty quick at editing. I've gotten pretty quick at you know doing the voiceovers without without. Uh, I mean, you guys know like how many times you can fuck up trying to record something over and over, uh, and then yeah, no one. When, when people then, listen to this podcast, they don't know how many times we, they didn't hear us say whatever. That's, that's true. I mean, they missed the whole Hitler conversation for God's sake. So <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, I can attest to that. But yeah, it's it's like a I'll basically most of it's like idea generation for me. Where for my channel, I'm I can produce little enough content that I just want to make sure that I have a good thumbnail idea because the thumbnail really is is basically all that matters on YouTube. Like it, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's it, it's it's fucked up. I mean, it, it's it's the way it is. So if, in my opinion, if you don't have a thumbnail idea, there's not even a point in making a video. Not even a point. If you have a bad thumbnail, it'll just get terrible views, even if the video is very good. But the problem is, like, you also have to have good, good content or the click-through rate will be bad. But anyway, so it's like I'll spend, like, a week kind of thinking about it, <laughs> writing about stuff, and then, like, a day or two recording. I'm going through your videos now. <laughs> the standard color text, white text, okay. color text. No, no, this no, listen, shouldn't listen. work. He drafts like this. Listen, this listen, dude. This fun. This is not balanced. Okay, listen. There is nuances to this you don't understand, for fuck's <laughs> sakes. Number one, some of these videos did terribly because they suck. But you have to – look at all the pictures. Okay? They're minimalist. I'll give you that. They're minimalist. But you have to have some curious factor to it, okay? You have to have a curiosity oh. factor in the videos. And that's not actually that easy – to come up with in a 20 year old game you know there's you say some of these suck but uh most of them are above 100k views well the one the he drafts like this i think that sounds like a porn ad or like you know the ads that you get if you go on pornhub and you for some reason don't have ad block and it's like you wouldn't believe what tom cruise just said <laughs> click like that's what this is and uh you know uh -huh. sometimes you just fuck up that's it because uh, I actually, that's one of my favorite videos that I made. I think the content is better than the thumbnail, but uh, your, you know, your sometimes content, I can vouch for that. Your content is very good. Uh, I oh, can't say I've gone through your YouTube video, but I did listen to all of the videos you did for ESO One LA, and they were all yeah, they're all yeah. very good. I even learned a couple of things. Really? Yeah. That's surprising. I can't remember what I learned, but you oh, know. okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really yeah. stuck with me, Jenkins. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that's great. Life lessons right there. But but I could definitely see how like uh, I I remember like you did um, global aggro, for example, um, which I could see that being a very good tip for because that is just not obvious in the game whatsoever. And that's, yeah, I I find any way for offlane that's like a very easy ag learning all the tricks of of aggro and creeps is like the easiest way. To Dude, do well in the offlane. That's like the only way in some games. That is the yeah. only way. So my goal for content is to like, I try per video to give somebody like one epiphany moment where it's like, oh shit, I didn't know that worked. Like that's what I try to go for because I find that if you if you do that, people will like they'll repost it, they'll comment. Like people people seem to engage with that for some reason. Whereas I think a lot of the Dota Alchemy content that I was making was just kind of, oh, I need to make a video today. I'm just going to talk to my camera. And mm. uh, I, I don't do that for my channel because I have enough time to actually think about stuff to answer your question in a very long-winded way. <laughs> no, no, that was super interesting. How do you prioritize like the entertainment value versus the educational value? Oh, uh, that's another good question. I, I basically just, you know, I get bored making videos, so I just fuck around and make jokes and put memes in and stuff. So I feel like the <laughs> entertainment element just kind of comes. Like I make a really boring video, but then as I'm doing it, you know, I have this like ongoing joke that I always do in the video where I found this really funny royalty-free image of 
just this really weird looking model of like a typical dude. Like, and I'm not, I'm not talking like model as in like an actual person. I'm talking like kind of a cartoon, but lifelike in an uncanny way mm -hmm. kind of person. And he's fully naked, but has no junk, no junk at all. I know what and, you're talking about. Yeah. that, And it's, a, it's such a funny picture. And every single time I'm referring to the viewer and I want something to pop onto the screen to represent the viewer, I put that guy on there. Or like a really fat, grotesque dude, and I just find it really funny to like insult a viewer in that way. And it, you know, it's, it's obviously a meme, and uh, people seem to like little memes like that. And I like doing it just because I'm laughing. I, I'll just my girlfriend will hear me laugh. And she's like, "Oh my god, you put that guy on the in the in a video again?" It's like I fucking did. She caught me, you know. <laughs> That's basically that's basically my life. Is is there also people such people do like repeated memes? It seems like they do. Yeah, he did the thing. <laughs> Oh, he's calling me fat again. <laughs> yeah. Is there a story behind the Diet Pepsi too? Uh, yeah, what is with that, by the okay, way? Okay. Mr. Bepsis man? Like, what the... I was like, I'm, what are they talking about? I'm glad that you even ask. I'm glad that I've said that enough that you even know what that is. That's really hilarious. For the longest time, that's just been a joke that I've done with, uh, with like, well, you know, quarantine, you're kind of losing it. I'm not going out. I'm not seeing anybody. So it's really just jokes between like me and my girlfriend. But I just, there are like connoisseurs of everything, wine, water, all of these different things. And, and it just seems so arbitrary to me. So I guess the joke is just that why can't I arbitrarily be obsessed with diet sodas, like diet beverages? What's the difference between like not regular beverages, diet, diet sodas only. And that's, that's kind of where that comes. Cause I thought about it, like, why do I think that's funny? And I guess that's why, you know, I'm rationalizing it after the fact, but really <laughs> I just, I just thought it was funny to start is to be obsessed with diet Pepsi. I'm still not sure if I entirely get it. <laughs> <laughs> how did this start exactly? Uh, how did it actually start? That's a good question. Somebody was, you like, somebody was talking about wine and you joked about being a connoisseur of diet sodas. And you qualified uh, Pepsi as the greatest or like what? No, no. I, I think uh, I was I, I was drinking a lot of Red Bull sugar free for a long time. And then I just, you know, started trying the diet sodas. And it was like a slow progression. It wasn't really like a there was a conversation. It was just I kind of found a way to work it into conversations, which is always incredibly awkward. But that's like the point is that it's really funny to just to feel like what the fuck diet soda like that's. That's kind of like what I'm going for with the diet soda thing is that it catches <laughs> okay, people okay. off guard of like they initially like, oh, it's he's a connoisseur in this thing. Wait, diet, like who's a connoisseur in diet soda? That's fucked up. You know, okay, that okay. it's really dumb. It's <laughs> it's yeah, it's quite dumb, actually. But whatever, you know, <laughs> no, 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 I fucking go with it. Um, I I grew up drinking diet soda instead of regular soda because uh, my dad drank a lot of diet coke and I wanted to be cool like my dad. And I'm like, I don't want regular coke. I want diet coke. And yep. uh, I got bullied for like liking diet soda. They're like, wow, Joey's so weird. He likes diet soda. And in <laughs> retrospect, what the fuck were those kids talking about? Why was that anything anyone cared about? It's like, man, we have nothing else to pick on Joey about because he's Dude. so fucking cool. Let's make okay. fun of him for drinking diet soda. I'm, I'm super with you there. And I'm going to go on a really ridiculous tangent and absolutely feel free to cut me off on this. And just remember, before I get into it, this is your fault. I most things are to be fair. I I got made fun of too. You know what I got made fun of for? Showering every time I poop. People seem to have a fucking problem with that, and I don't understand it. I don't know why people are so viscerally against poop shower pooping. Not pooping in the shower. For fuck's sakes, that makes it sound so much worse. But you see what I'm saying, right? It's like for some okay, imagine, imagine I'm in a public bathroom. I take a piss. You are watching me for whatever reason you're watching me and, and I go or I take a shit. Let's say I'm in a stall and I take a shit and then I come out and then I wipe my hands just with toilet paper. You, you're going to think I'm disgusting if I walk out of there and that's all I did. That all I did. But all of a sudden, when it comes to your anus, all you need is toilet paper. Hands, you need water. Anus, toilet paper is fine. That's bullshit to me. I don't see why hands and the anus are different. I want everything to be clean. Okay. That's I, why they created bidets. Okay. But yes. Big big bidet supporter here. Big bidet supporter nice. here. Love love the bidet. J if Jacobs, you can get do you have a bidet in your home? I don't, but I'm Why very frequent. Not? You spent a lifetime of showering every single time you shit. I'm a very How frequent shower. 
How have you not figured out this process and just been like, I know what can speed up my day. I know I can make the, I can cut 20 minutes out of my day. I, I just, I made sure that when I was renting a place that they had free utilities because I shower sometimes four <laughs> or five times a day. If I have to, I will, sh- I will shower every single time. You know, sometimes even if I, I have go number one, you know, so Dude. many, I have so many questions. You pee? Why not? I have so many <laughs> questions. It's, I want to bully both true. of you guys right now. This <laughs> is the type of guy that bullied Joey's, us. Joey's drinking Diet Coke at the lunch table and Jenkins is like holding it. He's like, I really got a shit, but there's... <laughs> I, do, I do that. Do, do, okay. Are, I do do that, actually. Are baby wipes acceptable? Because I use the exact same argument that you do, but not to justify showering, but to justify baby wipes. I am a stra- – there, there's baby wipes in my home. There are some in my backpack. I generally travel with them. It is my yes. preferred post-shit routine. Like, is that an acceptable alternative to a shower for you? 100%. 100%. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's not, I wouldn't say it's an acceptable alternative. I would prefer if I could get a bidet or shower. However, with that being said, <laughs> if I'm in a public space and, and it, you know, she's going to blow or if I if if I'm, you know, at an event or traveling or something, then baby wipes 100 percent. I carry two boxes of those <laughs> with me, not one, because I know I'm going to need them on the way back and I'm going to use them every single time. Of course, I'm going to use 100 of them if I have to, as long as it feels clean. Uh, I thought you you said two boxes. Uh, I thought like I I didn't realize you were talking about two boxes in your suitcase. I thought you were being like, yeah. When I show up to the venue, I have two boxes. Who wants some baby wipes? Everyone's just like looking at Jake's like, why is he getting baby wipes? He's just like, you never know when you gotta shit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So do you actively avoid shitting in public as much as possible? When you do shit in public, do you immediately have to shower when you get home? Uh, I will avoid shitting in public. Okay, so here's my here's my question for you in re- in response to this. Here's I parry your attack, okay? <laughs> and and I'm asking you, do you carry baby wipes everywhere? If you think you're going to potentially shit in public, do you carry baby wipes with you? Yeah, even yeah. if you even if you could hold it, if it's enough duration that you could hold it. And not every time I go out. If I go out with my backpack, yes. Also, I do keep baby wipes in my car for like an emergency, like road trip shit. But not like right. if I if I'm going to Vons or Ralph's or whatever to go pick up some groceries. No, like so. There's a certain level of commitment. If I have my backpack or my car, yes. Otherwise, no. Right. That's fair. And you know, I'll I'll make sure to just clean out the old gutters before. I go on a long road trip as well, you know, and, and, and maybe carry the baby wipes and just hope that, that uh, she's doing good down there. Um, how does our podcast always end up talking about <laughs> shit? Oh, is this a, is this a normal occurrence? Is this Char- a normal occurrence? Charlie is going to be... I, I know that Charlie, I'm talking to you, buddy, is listening to this right now. He's either like driving oh, to boy. and from BTS or he's at the gym <laughs> or he's just like maybe in the shower. And he's I he has this shit-eating you. grin on his face. He's so excited we're talking about this. <laughs> I need you, to, I need you to tell you this, Joey. By the way, Charlie has been working some of ESL1 with us. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> and there was a day that he by the end of the day he did have to shit very very ba- very badly and much like you jenkins he will not go in public he nice my he needs to go David. home because apparently he takes all all of his clothes off when he goes to shit and <laughs> Jenkins is like weirdo. <laughs> so weird to lie to the sand of draw, Jenkins. Possibly, who could possibly do that? Who does that? Oh, <laughs> anyway, it's uh, it's about like 20, 25 minutes from uh, BTS uh, offices to where Charlie and I live. So uh, apparently, he was flying down the highway the entire way. But he 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 told me adamantly. I made it. I did not shit myself, nor will I ever shit myself. Only animals shit themselves, Joey. <laughs> it's really, Jenkins, have you ever shit yourself? It's really a life or death. Because you definitely needed a shower after that. So I, I've been close. I've been really close. And thank goodness in, in Canada, Tim Hortons is such a popular 
uh, fast food place because <laughs> if there wasn't one on every corner that had a public bathroom, I probably would have shit myself in a car filled with my dad and his, and his colleagues from work. I was working and and ha- was it was it was go time. Uh, in you know it was for for uh, medical reasons, which I later found out, and it was very unfortunate. But also very fortunate. So shout out to Tim Horton. Uh, I'm sorry what I about what I did to your to your toilets. I'm very sorry, but nature call. One day Charlie's <laughs> going to shit himself, and he's going to be so mad at me. And I love that the day when Charlie finally shits himself, I'm going to be the first thing on his mind. It's going to make me very happy. <laughs> and yet, he's, Joey, we have yet to have a guest on here that is also shit everyone himself. has. I am convinced his, that his everyone has. Everyone has shit themselves in some way, shape, or form. So you've shit yourself. <laughs> yeah, like every everyone has. I was at a pizza place. It was fine. The, I felt I wanted to clean the. It was. It was. It wasn't a canvas booth. It was. It was. Uh, it wasn't a lot. We call it sharding. I think it's fine. We don't have to talk. People know about this. It's totally okay. Right. Right. I mean, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you know, if if you're if you're taking a leak, and you know, it's the same muscle that controls all of that area. And sometimes it's opening things that it shouldn't be opening. <laughs> and then things come out. Huh. Shit happens. Man. That's part of part it. Part. Does. It really does. So, you know, I don't blame you. I don't blame anybody else if that happened. Not me in particular. It's never happened to me. But if anybody <laughs> else, typically, I don't blame uh, them. Again, didn't happen never, to yeah, me. Never happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But totally blameless if it happened to somebody I'm else. Trying, Absolutely not. I'm trying to find literally anything that I can reach on to to shift away from this. And I've just no, been struggling for 30 seconds. It's all, it's all poop and politics. Um, That's it. Uh, our, uh, is is, is long haired Jenkins here to stay? Yes. Are, are, anyway, how, how, how often you do you guys longest? shit? <laughs> 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 oh, well, well, I mean, we did have this question. Uh, how many times? What is the most times you shit in one day, Jenkins? Uh, does diarrhea count? Uh, okay, can I ask you a question? I prefer, prefer saying no, but yes, you can ask me a question. Do you enjoy diarrhea? Be 100 per- because I don't no. matter. Nobody no. listening no. matters. Be honest with yourself, okay? I, I will does, be 100% honest. Diarrhea- I will be 100% honest. No, because I don't enjoy having to to get up and, you know, get off and get on. And like okay. going back and forth is real tiresome. Follow up question. Uh huh. If you had to rate diarrhea from one to 10 on the one, is it immensely painful and just one of the worst experiences you could po- possibly have? <laughs> 10 and immensely pleasurable. 10, 10 is, is <laughs> like you're experiencing a thousand orgasms at once. Where would you put diarrhea? Because I guarantee you it wouldn't be a one. Tell me, <laughs> tell me to my face that it would be a one. No, there's... it would not be a one. <laughs> it's a ten. I intentionally eat <laughs> food that's been left out for forty-eight hours. <laughs> it's, a t- it's a ten. All right. If you're thinking rot, well, if actually, I can't achieve orgasm without <laughs> diarrhea. So that's. That's a very specific kink, I think. It's incredibly. <laughs> I think that's the video clip right there, by the way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that that means no. the end of the video clip. No. Um, I, uh, shit. I mean, if five is entirely neutral, then like four and a half. I have so, so it's it's all right. I, <laughs> I mean, it's it, it is what it is. Can you at least admit to me there's good there's some good in it? There's a little bit of goodness. Uh, are you going for like Jenkins, a cleanse? You, you want to like like a cleansing aspect? Something here. It's no, okay. It's, it's, it's not that. I'm just saying. Face. I'm just saying. Be honest with yourself <laughs> and your soul and your heart. Okay. Don't let your logic speak. Tell me. I don't know what you're like. I I'm really searching within myself right now, <laughs> and I don't know what you're searching. Can't find any for. diarrhea. Like no, like there's no part of me that's like, like if I really get past all of all of the walls that I put up, there's nothing in there that's me that's in me a bit like, yeah. When I have diarrhea, sometimes you know, I just really enjoy it. <laughs> like 
There's nothing like that, Jenkins. No. I swear to God, I'm looking at I'm looking at Joey over there, and he's kind of nodding his head a little bit. It's not. It's not know. a nod. It's it's not even. It's not even close to. It. <laughs> I because 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 it always comes with like confounding other things that are like not great. It's hard to separate Take away those things. the diarrhea no, out from everything. No sickness. Else. Just one bout of diarrhea, and it's over. It's done. Still no, like. There, 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 there's more <laughs> missing smell. Lyrics. Is this the missing lyrics from John Lennon's Imagine? <laughs> Imaginal world where you could have diarrhea without the side effects. <laughs> that would be a world I would love to live in. In a retirement home, playing Dota all day, <laughs> crap in my pants. There's maybe, anyway. maybe you can speak positively to the efficiency of diarrhea. There you go. That's all I'm saying is it's not all bad. Everything is, is oh, this is bad. This is good. I would say it's somewhere in the middle. For me, maybe a little closer to good. For you, maybe a little closer to bad. And that's okay. That's okay. I just imagine, like, you sending a text to your girlfriend, like, honey, I'm so excited. I had the shits today. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's getting an audio <laughs> clip for sure. <laughs> why, why was this ever a thing for you? Like... Did you ever confess to somebody? You're like, don't psychoanalyze me. I had, I had had diarrhea. Like, were you in like the sixth grade? And you're like, yeah, I got, I I had diarrhea. And your friends are like, oh man, that sucks. And you're like, no, it was great. And they're all just like, huh? What is it? This this is an intervention. Profound embarrassment or something. I'm getting a, I'm getting a diarrhea intervention right now. It's okay. It's okay for me to enjoy diarrhea. Man, That's I, all right. I cannot wait to look at you know, like you know the graph on YouTube that shows you like viewership as a as a function of time. I'll send yeah. you. I'll send you what that <laughs> screenshot looks like, Jenkins, and then maybe I'll mark it with like, here's where we talked about politics. Here's where we talked about poop, and uh, then anything after that, like no one. <laughs> and here's where Jenkins <laughs> talked about his diarrhea fetish. <laughs> spewing nonsense for lack of a better word it's gonna be like anyway, a, yeah long hair jenkins is here to stay <laughs> <No>. <laughs> are we at maximum length or are you going like are, are we going longer i've gone longer i've gone longer i okay. could go longer it's uh, a lot of its laziness <laughs> it's the way it is i'm sure you guys with the beards it's a little bit the, of the same right you just leave it sometimes just let it grow my mine is mine was very scientific and experimental Mine, mine was 100% for, for science because I told myself I couldn't die without seeing myself with a beard. And now I'm going to see how long I can <laughs> get my hair. Did you think you were going to die soon? No, just in general. Wow. Because, I mean, like, once you get past These a certain days. point, like, also, yes, like, I was at a protest. Like, who knows what kind of, like, what can I get hit in that <laughs> with? Um, yeah, so, like, mine is purely experimental. I'm going to see how long I can get the hair before I hate it. Um, and I think it, it's not long for this world. I think the long hair is not long for this world. The only, the only fun thing about it is doing karaoke in the car, and I can swing it back and forth a little bit more. There's a satisfying visceral feel to when you can kind of get your hair to get some motion. You can kind of feel the weight going back and forth. It really adds That's like the, the the kinetics of music. But aside from that, I have not found a single positive quality to the long hair. So maybe. Well, I was actually playing D and D the other day, and uh, you know I have a fan over here, so I could just turn it on and then epic moments have like the hair like blowing in the wind like you see on like uh, uh i don't know commercials for i can't think of any shampoos because i'm garnier, male so Gar- garnier literally Fertis. buy any do, do you guys do you guys are maybe you guys selective maybe it's maybelline head and shoulders are you selective with your shampoo it I, sounds uh, like you are <laughs> I don't I know cannot, any brands. I've, if I've learned anything about Cap, it's that either Ellie buys the shampoo or he is so carefree about it that it's just like, this is on sale and doesn't smell bad. I guess I'll try it. There's no nah, way Cap I, has loyalty about shampoo. Probably even toothpaste. Do, do you use the same toothpaste or do you just grab no, a random no, no, no. tube? I use Sensodyne because I have teeth? very, very sensitive teeth. Yes. Cold hmm. water uh some some hot things especially cold kills me does it work absolutely kills me um i mean it's supposed to help some <laughs> it, it doesn't it doesn't eliminate it entirely That's but bad. maybe so, it's helping so if i, I wanted really if i wanted to torture you i should just get you like a big milkshake and beer like here oh, yeah. you don't, go buddy don't rip and out a hot my, chocolate uh, 
<laughs> don't 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 rip out my fingernails. Just like pour a bunch of like really cold shit in my mouth and yeah, call it a day. Chew on Dude, some ice it, cubes. It hurts. It's actually one of the more painful things. I I've had. I mean, I'm sure you guys. It's the same. I've had some painful injuries, and it's always the things you don't expect to be the worst that are the worst. You what know? is your worst injury? We we had an injury. All right, this is going to be how we close out the show, just like last time. Joey. Okay. Um, <laughs> what is your worst injury? Well, well, okay. Uh, probably my most painful thing. I don't know if it counts as an injury, but it was more a medical condition. Does that count? Sh- sure. I'll take it. Okay. Uh, so it was something called uh, grumbling appendix. At the time, that was what it was colloquially referred to as. Uh mm. It was not yet accepted as a medical problem. Uh, oh, now it's, it's called uh, chronic appendicitis. Yeah. And acute appendicitis is the one that you've heard of. That's the one where people's mm-hmm. appendixes explode. And chronic appendicitis is, from my understanding, when it like, leaks fluids and it inflames and, and doesn't explode for years and years and years. And I don't – I think it was – it was like a, a gastro doctor person that said it's it's equivalent. The cramps you can get from it are equivalent to what you would experience during or contractions with childbirth. I don't think it would be the same as the actual, actual baby, baby coming birth, out, but, sure. but the contractions, like it's it's very painful. So th- that would keep me off school for like literally two or three days straight where I would literally not be able to step out of bed because the pain was like so immense. And what I would do, and this is also part of the reason, getting deep here, why I like shower so much is because I would sit in the shower with the head pointed towards my, my stomach where the appendix was and put it as hot as it could go because the, the pain of the skin burning was less painful than the appendix having issues. And uh, yeah, so, so for some reason, showers give me comfort. Well, not for some reason. That's definitely the reason. My, my doctor said that the one that I, I was at the hospital for this after like two or three years of having it. And they said that if I wasn't at the hospital when it burst, it w- probably would have killed me. That's what they said. Ooh. So I don't know if that constitutes pain because that felt like any of the other episodes. It was no different. It's just that it burst that time. Uh, but it was very painful. It was like it was like nine out of ten painful. And I've like broken bones before. But like internal pain, it fucks you up, man. It really sucks. So Dude. you had to put up with that with for two to three years, and the solution was never like they were never like we should just remove it. No. So basically, I went to like I went to like my family doctor to start. They said, okay, this is like you know we need to send you to a specialist. And I kept getting tossed around doctors. Uh, mm. At one point, I was on migraine medication because they didn't. They were like, this isn't something. It has to be in your head. It. I took like the the highest prescription. Uh, like migraine meds that exist and it fucked me up in tons of other ways but did nothing for the pain uh, and then uh, eventually it, like literally the, the top three gastrointestinal person in Canada uh, couldn't figure out what what the issue was because they it, it was like it, it was considered like pseudoscience that this was a thing right mm-hmm. uh, and then and then after this many years now it's finally a thing and it's there's like documented cases on it and stuff but uh, yeah, it, it had to basically burst for them to take it out because they didn't know what the fuck it was. I was about to say, I imagine you're one of those documented cases since it literally burst while you're in the hospital. Yeah, it's I'm, like I'm not, finally you're I'm like, not sure. My dad was actually saying that it's like, I never did it, but he was saying like, it's kind of, you should, you should document that for future people or you should, you know, I never did it because I'm just a lazy piece of shit, but... <laughs> Cause, uh, cause like the, the specific, the episodes that would happen, it was very specific things that I, that would like trigger it to happen. Like if I ate popcorn, if I drank soda, sometimes it would happen. Mm. If I did a lot of that altogether, it's like just stuff that would irritate the intestines, I suppose. Um, and then they also like, they, the, the really weird thing is like at first it lasted like four hours and then five and then six. And then every time it happened, it lasted longer and longer to the point where it was like I was out for two or three days. And that's when I legitimately like it was happening. And I, I, I at a point I was just like, dude, mom, like I, I want to go to the hospital right now. Like this shit is fucking awful. I'm so done. I was so done with it. And then that time it actually burst. Very lucky. Very, very lucky. It sounds made up, but I swear to God, Google this. It's like it's a real no, thing. No, no, no. I, no, I, I Googled I, it. 
I have a uh, friend who had terrible. an appendix out last week. Like I've, <laughs> I, I know multiple people who've had to get them removed for various conditions, but nothing that sounds as severe, like as undiagnosable as yours. I could only imagine what kind of shit you go through just being like, well, time to wake up today and then not be a human because my insides are broken. Yeah, that was that. That's that sucked. It, it so it, it's estimated to account for one point five percent of appendicitis cases. So already, like that's it's like one in some large number which uh which sucks fucking but, appendix man it's like it's, a fucking time bomb man it really is it really is uh like humans are honestly not well engineered they are not <laughs> yeah. did so you know so there's fucking call elon or something can we fix this we can land rockets we, now let's fix the body what are the devs doing what are they thinking why will they not patch this like they're oh, just you know what we make a side shop okay we, we, we take all of the internal parts and you match them into pairs of three. And then if you make enough pairs of internal parts, you can just, um, I don't know, get some kind of uh, cosmetics like haircuts and shit. And then um, eventually you that remove really it good. because I spent all my money on that. Yeah. But I, I hear a rumor that that doesn't actually work. People don't like it. So maybe. I don't know. I don't know. That sounds like a really good idea. <laughs> anyway, where are you guys worst inju- injuries? <laughs> I kind of took that one on a very long tangent. No, 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 it was fine. We we uh we went on a long injury list last, last time that we were doing our podcast. Yeah, it's 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 not great. And I believe uh I believe we both had a story to tell, uh, and we said we'd save it for the next time. So now we, is what, that next time? It feels like it's fitting. Mm-hmm. Um, I your, yours might be more eloquent than mine, and and I'll I'll, mm-hmm. I'll I'll actually tell two because the story that I was going to tell that's related to your foot story is not actually the worst time I've hurt myself. The worst time I've hurt myself or been in pain, it, it was it was a very short stint of pain. It probably only lasted for about ten seconds. But when I was getting my braces put on, I don't know if either of y'all had braces, but generally they put like a like a metal bracket around a molar to kind of anchor all the wires and everything else to your teeth too to kind of straighten them. And the bracket goes under your gums; it, it, it goes pretty high up there. And when you put on the bracket, generally it's the they're, they're they're snug and like it's a little uncomfortable because there's metal shit that's poking in your in your gums now. Um, but but you bite down a little wooden stick to kind of stick it in place and make sure that it really gets all the way up there. Um, and for whatever reason, one of my molars, um, I found out it had some kind of, of of decay that was like really high up in the root. That was like, it never gave me trouble. I didn't know that it was there. I never like had a toothache. But there there was some, there was like a little pocket up there of, of, of like a, a very acute uh, like crack and cavity. And when I went to go bite on the little wooden stick to set this bracket into my tooth... Um, I, I not only heard the little bit of the root cracking, oh. I, I, I fucking, I was laying at like a 45 degree angle in the chair and the amount of time it take, it took me to go from 45 in the chair to standing on my feet bent over saying some kind of uh, like He-Man yell like, what was instantaneous. I jumped out of that fucking chair. I've never moved so fast in my entire life. I was so, I, I it was in such like a sharp instantaneous pain and I scared the shit out of the nurses. They're like, what is, what? What do we do this every day? Like you did the other three before this. What was so bad about this one? I'm like, I don't know. It hurts. It's bad. And something's wrong. Um, and and yeah, normally normally pain is like, oh, I broke something. I stabbed something. I like had some kind of internal injury. But putting putting my braces on, I don't know if I'll ever be able to match that that level of instantaneous crazy pain. Like there was no adrenaline attached. It was just it was fucking insufferable. Tooth pain is just nasty. like it, yeah. yeah, it's just it's just like straight on the nerves, so it's oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh god, Dude, that sucked. Um, but we were talking about feet, and um, there was one time uh, when I when I was in college, we had uh, like our like our dorm shower, and it wasn't a full dorm floor shower. Like there weren't a ton of people sharing it. It was just uh, two different rooms that were like Jack and Jill style. They shared a bathroom, and they were connected. Those two rooms were connected. And um, the shower in that room, the room that I got in college when I was uh, an RA, was the uh, ADA room, the, the, the room for, for the handicapped people. And as such, there was a much bigger floor 
great because you needed to be able to get a wheelchair into this shower. And um, it, it was, in theory, great because my shower was giant compared to everyone else's small box they had to sit in. And Jenkins, I also am a man who loves a shower. shower favorite, best part of the day. All the best thinking happens in the shower. Every, every- I do. I'm with you. I'm with you on that, dude. I could... You're preaching to the choir. Big, big shower person over here. I definitely feel you. Um, anywho, I was, I, I want to say it was like maybe four in the morning or something like that. I, I was up late uh, writing a paper. I wasn't even due the next day, but I was on like some, some crazy mental kick. I'm like, dude, I fucking got this. I know everything about this topic. Um, I go, I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to go to bed. I'm a little bit groggy. Um, and and as, as I'm watching watching myself, I somehow kick up the metal grate that's on the floor, and it must have been loose. And as I look down to be like, oh, I I I need to like bend over and place this back over because it's like it, it's gross actually. Like it, it looks like the underside of a shower grate. I'm like, this is disgusting. Let me let me try and fix it and see if I can put it back in place. Um, I slipped as I went to go bend over and as I was, uh, stabilizing myself, my, my dumb human body was just like, oh, let me firmly put my foot down so I don't, you know, fall in the shower, which kills all the old people, right? I'm thinking that I'm going to be a life alert commercial. Um, I, I, I put my foot down immediately on the metal grate and I hear a popping sound that I've never heard before uh, because it's the sound of a somewhat dull-ish piece of metal that goes, um, I'm not exaggerating, probably about three-fourths of an inch into my heel and the popping sound is the thick skin on my heel breaking and now I, this wasn't, wasn't as painful. I didn't feel like a, oh no, oh no, like I did like the tooth or a broken bone. I'm just looking down. There's adrenaline pump and I'm tired and I'm like, this is bad. This is really bad because I have to extract the metal thing from my foot by myself in the shower. Uh, blood is starting to happen. Um, I'm thinking about the YouTube graph again and how it has to be dipping again at this particular point. Uh, bl- bl- blood is happening. I'm trying to be like, how do I do? I just do. I just yank on it, and 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 it, and it was a little bit stuck. It was a little bit stuck, so I had to give it a little more force than I wanted. As I just pull it out from my foot, and I'm 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 bleeding. It's out. It's not the most pain I've ever been, and it's probably like a. Uh, on the pain scale where 10 is the most pain ever also yeah if 10 is the most pain ever this is probably like a six um and i'm like okay this is this is fine this is fine right but then i quickly realize um i just can't walk on that foot anymore because putting any amount of weight on this injury sucks way worse than puncturing it so i spent the next shit two to three weeks walking my right foot on the toes the entire time because I could not put any weight on my heel as it was healing. I had to go to the doctor and like get new tetanus shots because they're like, do you have records for those? And I'm like, um, I think I got them. My mom said I got them. And they're like, yeah, let's give you some new ones. Um, yeah, so so I, I, I punctured, I, stu- I stepped directly on a metal spike and couldn't walk for three weeks and it fucking sucked <laughs> i can't believe you didn't get stitches for that the, that, the that way sounds like a stitch injury so it, it, you'd think it would be a stitch injury but it wasn't like it was um it, it was almost knife-like in the sense that that the blade was like really really skinny i wasn't like ripping wide or creating like this gash that was pulling apart oh, I... it, it, it was almost like you know i i had like the deepest paper cut yeah, that's much more reasonable. That is, that sounds good. Oh God! Uh, all right, no, nobody's gonna finish this podcast episode. <laughs> no, I'm, out. I'm not listening to this. Uh, I gotta go to bed soon, so uh, I will tell my story real quickly. It was, uh, it's a similar puncturing foot injury, which is that uh, my when I was a teenager living with my mom. We uh, got a house. It was a 1940s house, um, so it had real wood floors. Um, you might be seeing where this is going. There's oh, a no. hallway. Oh. You do the thing where you slide on your socks and stuff, and you, oh. you, you run, you slide. Oh, I'm uncomfortable. And, and I was going with the uh, 
with the grain. And uh, there was just, I guess, a piece of the flooring that was sticking up a little bit. And uh, yeah, a piece of wood about that big. <laughs> just whoosh, straight into my foot. My dad was visiting at the time. And, uh, <laughs> and I remember hitting that, feeling the pain, going down. <laughs> and... And uh, unfortunately, oh. I'd, like I'd snapped the wood uh, off the floor entirely, and it was sticking out of my foot. And uh, I very distinctly remember the 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 moment of like of lo- them looking at it and stuff. And I'm like, I'm on the ground. I'm like, fuck, you know. And, and I've got a, a pillow on my face, and we're talking about whether or not I'm going to go to the hospital. And I'm just like, I'm 16, you know. I'm just like, ah, it's all good. I was like 15, 16. I was like. Oh, it's okay. I'll, I'll deal with it. And I put the pillow in my mouth and I just remember biting down and just screaming as my dad just took the took the piece of wood, uh, a <laughs> big ass fucking splinter out of my foot. How? Yeah, that was a, oh, that was that, a fun one. That's a mega. Was it like parallel to your foot? Did it go like toe to heel or was it like going across? It went, it, it went in like the at the ball of my feet. Oh. And then went to to oh. about like oh. not quite to the heel, but oh. yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't I don't like that at all. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't like that. That, that one was that's my did, story. Did I don't you, know if that's that is that's what anything, everybody but. has nightmares about. That is legitimately like a, a meme nightmare. You know. <laughs> I thought you were gonna I say. I can't believe that actually happened. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say it went under the nail, which is like one of the things that I oh, I no, can't that handle. Was terrifying. Oh. Good lord! Could 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 you could you walk after that? Did you have similar walking problems? Uh, surprisingly, I was actually I was very fine. Uh, the injury wow. healed uh, really fast. I I presume it was pretty shallow. Okay. Uh, Better genetics than me. That's probably what it, it was. It did, yeah. I I do I do remember that it took a while to pull out. It was definitely stuck. See, I would be worried about when you pull it out that a splinter gets stuck in the opposite direction, and then you're mm. just stuck in this infinite loop of pulling splinters <laughs> out in each way. That would be the worst pain. What would you rank that? Out Every of single time I think about that, it's like I'm surprised there's no wood that got left in my foot. But uh, I remember it healing like pretty quickly. Uh, pain wise, I don't know, probably like six or seven. Uh, okay. I don't. I don't know if it was like the worst pain I've experienced or anything. But Man. that was that was the story I was supposed to tell from last time. On that note, Jenkins, I'm, I think I need to apologize and say that I'm sorry before I say thank you. So I'm you sorry. Apologize. And he he should apologize to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this was a bad idea. This he brought up the politics <laughs> and he brought up the poop. We didn't talk. We didn't bring up either one of those conversations like this normal. Was supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Um, I take no accountability for anyone who clips any of these parts out on Twitter and is like, "Wow, Jenkins, he's a person." Um, <laughs> Man loves his diarrhea. I do. I, you know, I'm I'm very uh, I'm militant on that. <laughs> I'll, I'll hey, come out and say it. It's important to have. Now that's an opinion you need to share on Twitter. Thank you. Yeah. You know, BLM. I don't know. Has, why can't we get diarrhea trending, please? <laughs> Where, where's the best place to for people to to follow you to check out your shit to to do all the Jenkins Dota things? Uh, YouTube.com slash c slash Jenkins sixty nine. It's a sex. <laughs> your first grade teacher, man. <laughs> it would have been Jenkins. It would have been Jenkins. It would have been Jenkins four, but you just fucking never. I forgot it. I don't know if that's going to be. A, I don't know if it's going to be in the episode. That joke makes no, might make no sense. Anywho, thank you, <laughs> thank you for your time, my dude. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, boys. <laughs>